Hello, Year 9. Following on from your lesson about the toll puddle martyrs and smuggling, you're going to look at two key learning questions today. Why was there a decline in the use of the death penalty? And why was transportation to Australia first introduced and later ended? But to start with, pause the video and have a chance to answer these SAS starter questions, which recap on last lesson. Let's remind ourselves about our learning journey. We've looked at how and why there was a growth in highway robbery, poaching and smuggling. We have thought about why witchcraft stopped being prosecuted as a crime. And last lesson, we thought about the case of the Tollpoddle Martyrs. As I said, today we're going to look at number four and five. Why was there a decline in the use of the death penalty? And why was transportation to Australia introduced and then ended? Let's think about the death penalty first of all. You'll remember the bloody code, which was the name given to the excessive use of the death penalty in this period. Gradually, the number of crimes punishable by death was reduced. Hanging wasn't seen as an effective deterrent. As they were hanging many people, it clearly wasn't people stopping people committing crime. Another group of people saw the death penalty as inhumane. That means they thought it was morally wrong and cruel. There were alternative punishments that replaced it, like transportation, which we'll look at in a moment. And more people thought that criminals should have a chance to reform. Sometimes that's called rehabilitation. But the idea that a criminal can feel sorry for what they've done and change their ways was considered a better alternative to either hanging them or perhaps just sending them abroad. Your first task is simply to write down the key learning question here. And in as much detail as you can, use the information on the previous two slides to answer the question. It's very straightforward and the bullet points on the last slide will really guide you to the answer. So pause the video and complete that task. Our second key question is about transportation to Australia. Now we need to be really clear about this. You've already studied this topic when we were thinking about North America. So if we went back to 1610, you know that convicts, that's prisoners, were being sent to the new English colonies in North America. And in fact, if you think back to just before Christmas, your assessment for the autumn term was based on the question, why was it introduced? We'll come back to that at the end of the lesson. After 1783, as a result of the American War of Independence, England lost these American colonies. America became independent of, of England and the prisoners could therefore no longer be sent to America. Instead, prisoners were being transported to Australia, which had been claimed as part of the British Empire in 1770. So that means that Britain considered itself to be in control of Australia. Transportation was still considered a serious punishment that was seen as an effective deterrent. Again, that means it was supposed to put people off committing a crime, but it was more humane, that's less cruel, than the alternative, which was perhaps the death penalty for petty crimes. Most of the criminals who were transported to Australia had been convicted of theft, not violent crimes. About 160,000 people were transported to Australia, of whom about a sixth were women. So transportation had practical advantages. Britain's prisons were not designed to hold large numbers of criminals being convicted in the courts. Transportation was seen as an alternative to building new prisons. Also, the prisoners sent to Australia would help to populate the new colony, which would help to secure Britain's ownership. That means Britain needed to put people in Australia in order to claim it for its own. There was little point in it claiming an empty desert or wasteland. It needed colonies, communities and workers over there. And the convicts or prisoners supplied this human, um, human need. What was the journey like? Well, it was pretty grim. Following their trial, convicts were held in a prison while they wait waited for the next ship to leave for Australia. As prison buildings were overcrowded, some were held in what's called hulks. These are disused ships as floating prisons just offshore. Conditions on the hulks were harsh. Prisoners were kept in chains, or as we can see in the picture, even cages. On the transport ship to Australia, Convicts were kept below the deck in very dirty and cramped conditions. 
the journey could take as much as three months. Once in Australia, convicts were sent to work for settlers. Their new masters provided food and housing. When the seven year sentence had been served, most convicts could not afford the expensive journey to return home. So they remained in Australia and they settled there. Gradually, however, transportation to Australia was brought to an end. And now we're going to look at why this was. It officially ended in 1868 because they were changing attitudes in both Britain and Australia to help explain this change. In Australia, many people believed that ex-convicts were responsible for high crime levels in some Australian towns. Free settlers, that's people who'd moved of their own accord to Australia, argued that convict workers meant there were fewer jobs for others and that employers were able to pay lower wages overall. It's not difficult to imagine that many people in Australia who were not convicts resented the fact that Australia was being used as a dumping ground for British criminals and there was an outcry about it. But in Britain things were changing too. Some British campaigners said conditions on the convict ships were inhumane. Others argued that transportation was too lenient. That means some people felt that the transportation ships were too awful to put people on. Others people felt, other people felt it was an easy option and not as bad as being put in a British prison or the death penalty. Australia was becoming a desirable place to settle, especially after gold was discovered there. So actually transportation did seem to be less of a deterrent. People were more enthusiastic about going. People were concerned about the costs of running the prison colony in Australia. And there were new ideas about the use and purposes of prisons that led to more prisons being built in Britain. With more prison places available at home, there was less need for transportation. And we'll look at those prisons in a later section of the course. You've just got one task, but it's a big one. It's an exam question, it's 12 marks. The question is, why was transportation used as a punishment in the period 1600 to 1850? And you're asked to think about American colonies and convict labourers, that means prison workers in Australia. You also need to include ideas of your own, and I'm gonna help you with that on the next slide. So, if you think back to the assessment just before Christmas, this is a really similar question, but it's tagged Australia into it as well. So you've already answered and indeed prepared an answer for why transportation was introduced to America. I'll remind you about some of those reasons in a minute. Remember, this is a 12 mark question, so you should be aiming for about a page of A4. You can always write more, but if you want a really good mark, you probably couldn't write much less. To answer the question, you need to think about a range of different reasons why this punishment of transportation was used. Try and break it down into separate sections, dealing with transportations to America and then to Australia. Explain how different factors connect as you build your, your argument. So let's look at the list of possible reasons you could write about on the next slide. When you have written about them, as always, you need to finish with a conclusion in which you say what you think was the most important reason and why. So some of the reasons you might consider that we've thought about. Transportation was seen as an effective deterrent. In other words, part of the point of it was to put people off committing crimes in the first place. It was considered to be so unpleasant initially that it was thought that people wouldn't commit crimes if they knew they might be transported. So it was about reducing crime rates. Secondly, we said England didn't have an effective prison system, so prison wasn't a feasible alternative. It wasn't transportation or prison, there just weren't enough prisons. Building prisons is obviously expensive, so people were reluctant to develop this. England wanted to establish permanent colonies in North America and then later in Australia. They needed labour for this, and convicts could be used to populate and provide manpower. That's what we mean by the term convict labourers. They could till the land, build communities, build houses. Fourthly, some people were developing new ideas about punishments that allowed people to be sorry for what they'd done and change their ways. We call that rehabilitation. There was a feeling initially that criminals, if criminals were taken far from people and places that might have drawn them into a life of crime in the first place, they'd get a fresh start and be able to start again. And that was seen as a constructive way of dealing with criminals.
And finally, as we said at the very beginning of the lesson, transportation was seen as more humane than the death penalty. Increasingly, people had become fed up with the bloody code. They thought it was morally wrong and they wanted to find ways of avoiding using the death penalty. So you've got the key points you need to include in your answer. All you need to do now is write it. Don't forget to submit it to me via Show My Homework. Thank you.